<laughs> yeah, so is Richard just letting us uh, get on with it, do you think? Oh no, you're there! Yeah, no, I, I, I was just kind of waiting until a little uh, uh, a fl flurry there at the beginning. Uh, because I, I, I can never manage to keep my eyes on three things at once. So, um, hi everybody. So we have quite a few um, uh, mysterious, uh, oh, hang on, here we go. We have quite a few mysterious people, not really connected, only half connected. Nikki, um, we've, uh, uh, there you are. Nikki, we've got you twice. Yeah, yeah, I think. You will always have me twice, I do apologize. I don't have a camera. Sorry, I have to see something. I don't have a camera on my desktop. No, I'm right, not sorry. I, I have to come in on my mobile, but yeah. it's too small to see you all on my mobile, so I have you on my desktop. It's really sounds, interested in breakout rooms because I'm often sent to two different rooms. So that sounds very sensible. Okay, okay. so uh, that's, that's great. <laughs> so we've got still got people coming in um, and. Uh, Monica, your cat is visiting us today, which is lovely. <laughs> What's his or her name? Sophie. Sophie. <laughs> okay, I'm just just waiting for a little bit while uh, there are well, a few more uh, people struggle in. <laughs> but do feel able to talk amongst yourselves. Um, would that it was that simple. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, exactly, yeah, yeah. We were chattering away, Richard, until you- You were chattering away, I know, I could hear you. Yeah. And now, now that you're here and present, and um, audible, it's a bit intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. You're not intimidating, Richard, honestly. What should I do? Should I wear, maybe I should wear a silly hat. No, it's not intimidating at all. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so you've got quite a few people who are sort of skulking at the moment, um, or not connecting successfully, maybe. I could only fit nine on my screen. Yeah, well, you're clearly screen challenged. I am, Richard. So how? Um, so today um, is an attempt to, uh, rather than you have the the usual format, we'll pretend it's a bit more like having lunch, where the conversation is a bit more freeform. But of course, we can't have multiple conversations going on at the same time. Um, so uh, I don't quite know how to manage this and I think we will try and do it but the, the aim of today was to try to have a conversation should you choose to take it in that direction about um, what particularly as an artist what has changed for you in the past mm -hmm. few months uh, what has been good what's been bad mm -hmm what's maybe been not different at all. Um, when we did our first one of these a couple of months ago, uh, a lot of people said they were kind of enjoying being locked down. So I wonder how things feel now. Uh, Rachel, you were, uh, for those of us here in, in Devon, we're feeling a little bit threatened, I think, by tomorrow, which is the official day when um, uh, the hordes can descend on us and you were, um, while I was skulking away, you were you were expressing some fears about that and uh, about the um, main road into Devon turning into a car park, which it often does on holiday weekends. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it feels it feels very odd and very sort of um, kind of tenuous and tense, um, having had um, so much kind of peace and a sort of sense of tranquility in a way um but i think actually since um i think since this the half term the school half term in may i think there was a i, I generally yeah i could definitely sense that there was a whole new influx of people coming in even though they weren't legally supposed to be allowed um but to, from tomorrow it seems like it's just going to be a complete free-for-all mm. and um 
yeah, it's a bit of a strange feeling, really. Can we just do a quick, a very quick round robin um, of see where people are, where are people, where are people coming in from today? So I won't try and do it in any order because everyone's screen's different. So just um, speak up and say where you are from today. Oh, we have do, you mean, oh, do, you mean, do you mean geographically? I mean geographically, yeah. I mean, me, uh, um, um, morally and ethically, we can talk about later, but uh, geographically <laughs> for now, uh, where, where are you joining us from? <coughs> I'm, in, I'm in Truro, okay. in, in Cornwall. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the furthest down. I'm in Penzance. Okay. Where are you, uh, Peony? Up Norwich, on the far opposite opposite side of Britain to you all. Yes. Welcome. Okay, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll tell you what, I'll take I'll take you around my screen because it, otherwise it's a bit hard to know when to speak. So Margaret, you uh -huh. you are from. Buffy Tracy on the edge of Dartmoor. Okay. And yeah, the hordes are here. Yeah. <laughs> Ready. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Monica. I'm in Sheldon, which is a village on the other side of the river from Tynmouth. And um, yeah. the hordes came a while ago, regardless. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, and Ellie, you are uh, in a different country entirely. Yes. Very different. I'm I'm in Cyprus. It's very hot. Um, I'm listening to it where everybody is. Uh, lockdown was was extremely short, and I actually found it fantastic. So we maybe when we talk about that, my my thoughts on that. But yes, I'm in I'm in Cyprus. I, I'm quite a long way away. <laughs> You do look quite hot, I must say. Look hot. I, yeah, I've, got the, I've got the fan on. I don't know how long. I hope I can last a little bit. It's getting hot by the minute here, but I've got a fan on. Yeah. Your screen, your screen is quite blurry. Oh, is it? Oh. It's because it's, 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 it's sweating. It's a bit... Oh, maybe it's hot. There's not much I can do about that. It's old computer. Not condensation, then. Sorry? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, the fans on. The fans on. <laughs> uh, uh, Julie, we're just kind of going around and saying where where we are at the moment. Where where are we? Uh, okay. Geographically. I'm in East London. Okay. Good. And um, I'm quite concerned about the hordes coming out of the pubs tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So um, I probably will go nowhere tomorrow yeah. just to stay away from it. It worries me a lot. Yeah. Julia. Hi, another Julia. Hi. Yeah. I'm in Lanscow, which is South Devon, quite near to Dartington, where Art Dot Earth is based. Um, yeah, it's been a very interesting time. Um, it's like, you know, like for me, the sort of whole macrocosm has actually shrunk to about that size because I've been. Um, I'm one of the people who are shielded, so I've been more or less in the house or in the vicinity. Um, but yeah, it's had its um, definite pluses and uh, <laughs> things that I've really enjoyed. <laughs> All right, well, we'll come back. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna keep going around. So, uh, Nikki. Hi, hi. Um, I'm in the Liscard area, Southeast Cornwall. Okay. Um, Minu, you're in Totnes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Michael is uh, is a silent dog, so we don't know where Michael is. <laughs> uh, and Willie, likewise, is um, skulking in the background, so we don't know if he's really listening or not. Um, so we're quite a small group, which actually is, is helpful in terms okay. of Willie, Willie's in London. Ah, okay. Willie's there. Okay, so he's he's listening in. He's going to join in. Uh, we're quite a small group, which is quite helpful, um, and I think really the only way to have a sort of conversation that's viable is if I sort of chair it in a way, if that's okay. Um, so in other words, if you want to say something, as usual, raise a hand and I will uh, call on you. 
if you uh, want to agree with something, you can either use your um, uh, reactions button or you can just wave your hands like that if you just kind of want to agree. Um, does that sound okay if we do it that way? Yeah. If we try and do a free for all. Yeah, thank you. Good. A few thumbs up. So, Julie. Um, yeah, just to say, mm -hmm. I can't stay for very long. So, um, when I need to go, I'll just wave and, and yeah. be on my way. That's completely fine. As the usual, there's no uh, no rules to being at First Friday. <laughs> you come and go and you, as you wish. Um, yeah, Margaret. Yeah, sorry, I'm the same. Um, I, I'm on a muted connection, so I'm going to disappear probably fairly soon. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. We, I think we'll probably only go for about an hour anyway. We'll see how see how it goes. But um, um, does anybody want to kick off? Uh, uh, Julie, you were sort of starting to say that you've been particularly sheltered. Um, I'm interested to know who else has been getting out and about. Oh, almost no one. Uh, Julie. Um, I decided um, that I would limit my journeys out and about. So I, I live on a boat in the King's Cross area, and I decided that I would just cycle between my boat and my studio maybe once a week, once or twice a week, and actually just stay in one or the other. Um, I really felt a need to minimize um, going out and about and it, and that's actually given me um, some peace and quiet that I didn't have before so um, yeah and I've done rare cycle rides around London and it's been deserted but I think it's all it's all going to come to an end yeah Yeah, Ellie, can I ask you what it's been like in uh, in Cyprus? Well, uh, the government was absolutely fantastic and clamped down very, very quickly. Um, and everybody just did exactly what they were asked to do. And we got through it very quickly. Personally, for me, it was, I'm just so lucky. I maybe cannot really think what it's been like for everybody there. My parents are in... In, in Kent and I was I still am quite worried about them and I think everybody's had very different experiences but I was very lucky it was actually fantastic because I didn't feel the pressure of having to go out and because this this place where I have also have my studio and the house means um, that I was able to be in the studio instead of having to go out so for me I pushed my work forward. I was able to um, spend even more time in nature, which is where the garden, the, the huge amount of land here is what is like my laboratory where I gather all the information I need to take back to the studio and make work. So I actually really quite enjoyed, <laughs> enjoyed it. So I feel a bit bad saying that because I know so many people had, had quite a, um, a challenging time um, with the fear, of course, as well. So I, I can't relate completely to it. I've just been very lucky. Anybody else want to come in? Yeah, Christiana. Well, Actually, Christiana and then Martin. Yeah. Um, 10 days before the lockdown, I had my first meeting with someone from the School of Mines. Uh, I was planning with Chloe from Cultivator a project about mines, plants, people. And yeah, that's on ice. That is, I don't, we are still in conversation, but the way I wanted to work to explore mining sites and the vegetation and which plants potentially would give botanical color just didn't happen and um and i just yeah it, it it's all i've been doing is no it, it's actually i have to rephrase that I've, I've just went back to my textiles to my comfort blanket i've been making a patchwork 
what has come out of it is sort of an exchange with some other friends, textiles people, uh, sending fabrics backwards and forwards, and I've started writing. So um, suddenly my comments on social media became sort of like reflective poems. And oh. some, similar to, to someone else, I, I think I've only been once to Helston and twice or three times to Parnathna, which is only six miles away. So I'm, I'm staying within the vicinity and that is really interesting because it has changed, sort of intensified actually my relationship we have a Jubilee pool, what is called Battery Rocks, uh, where people go swimming. And so if you go there every day and at different times, you suddenly get a different relationship. Mm. On a personal level, um, I'm lucky I have two lodges. Um, so I'm not, I'm single. And I'm glad that I've got friends where we had uh, FaceTime conversations um, and since it has become easier for example Lizzie and I Lizzie came this week round for a cup of tea in the garden and we met up at Tremonier Sculpture Garden so so it's been it's been sort of a bit all over the place and at times really personally quite challenging yeah mm -hmm. And I worry about my exhibition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we'll come back, we'll probably come back to that, but um, uh, Mark, Martin. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, it's quite strange for a start, really. Um, um, on a personal level, we are quite fortunate in that we've got quite a big space outside the house, so we actually weren't confined inside. And of course, in the early days, the weather was fantastic. Mm. Um, so there's been much more work done in this garden over the last month than was ever done before, really. Um, having said that, um, I, I think I personally have uh, found the loss of my sort of social network, if you like, uh, quite keenly, really, because I'm not I'm not a social media person usually. Um, and most of the people I know are through, well, there are groups like this, but um, one of my main interests being with the Open University Geological Society, um, which, just as an aside, I was interested in what Christiane was saying about her mining project. I'd like to hear more about that. But um, that's all been on hold, and uh, there have been instructions from the headquarters that no no field trips may be organized um, uh, until September possibly October so I don't really know what's happening after that um, but I did manage a clandestine trip up to Dartmoor with a couple of <laughs> acquaintances <laughs> shall we say um, where we were looking at um, I think I've mentioned this before possibly I might have mentioned it to Rachel. Um, uh, the relationship between the granite up there and the surrounding rocks and countryside and what that relationship is and what things look like on the ground, really. So that's kept me going, uh, going a bit. And now my house is surrounded by scaffolding. <laughs> So somebody's going to take the roof off next week. Right. Well, you've got excitement then. <laughs> so I'll call it there. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if anyone's had an experience like uh, Christiana's, uh, who found that the way she want, usually works or wanted to work was just became not possible um, and maybe won't be possible for quite a while, Rachel. Can't hear you, Diego. Can you hear me now? Yeah. 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 So um, I'm currently doing a PhD, which involves a lot of field work. Yeah. And um, for the summer, I'd I'd planned. Well, it's, it was a very long process of planning and organising and applying, etc. 
um, but I was supposed to be going on to, on the Arctic Circle residency um, for the whole of June. So I've had a very different, um, yeah, very different sort of time. And so, yeah, all the field trip that I planned, the residency, so I was uh, supposed to be going to um, Helsinki in August as well. I don't know if that's happening. I think it's pretty unlikely because it was uh, based around a catamaran um, with sort of international artists. So, um, yeah, and my kind of centre and base Sorry. was in Plymouth. Sorry, here's somebody talking. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, basically I've been having to work from home and um, start making other projects that, that I, because the project that I was doing involved marine science, um, the sea and um, lots of marine scientific data. So all of that's not going to be possible for however long, I don't know how long it will be. Um, but in the meantime, I've been um, enjoying kind of reconnecting with where I live in Totnes and having sort of walks every evening into the Dartington estate because it's very near to where I live. And I've been reconnecting with the river as well. And I've been swimming in the river a lot. And it's, um, I'm starting to, yeah, I'm starting to make work um, connected to the river again. So it's kind of going back almost, Richard, to the ephemeral river residency. I'm not picking up, up from there, but kind of taking a lot of um, inspiration from that extraordinary sort of experience and time. So it's, it's really interesting. And I'm, I'm just re relishing the kind of incredible beauty of where where I live, um, but in order to kind of connect with the river in a in a sort of quiet way, I have to go very early in the morning. So thankfully, I have a couple of friends that want to swim early in the morning. So we're meeting at six thirty in the morning, and having this this sort of time and space in yeah incredible kind of nature and beauty and immer immersing in the water. And I've tr I have sort of tr ventured out um, to the beach a little bit. Uh, but it feels very different now because it feels um, kind of more exposed and it's a very different experience kind of being in the sea and looking out to the horizon as opposed to being in the river and being immersed in that space and being enclosed by that space. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually relishing this time and ha having to adapt and I, I don't know where it's going to take me, but it's, it's an interesting journey. So that's where I'm at at the moment. Thank mm. you. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peony, and you're muted at the moment. Do you want to unmute you? There you go. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm. I'm in Norwich in a terraced house, in a very squished up in a terraced house with a minute garden, and so it felt quite trapped. And I'm also um, doing an MA in fine art at um, Newa, the local university. And so that all the equipment I was using came to an end and I couldn't use it anymore. And so I had to think of new things. And my the subject leader said, well, what about thinking hypothetically, think big. And previously, I don't remember, my work's all about the sea, marine especially, um, um, overfishing. But um, so I'd been done a certain amount on kelp forests that I discovered. I didn't know anything about kelp forests then. And that one of the things I was thinking about was then I tried and I talked to a structural engineer and things as well about a tunnel in through a kelp forest off the coast. And I did lots of research and there's all various things. And that was one thing I did um, because I wanted to make the hidden to show the hidden to make. And also, I think, although some places like um, in Miami, they have an underwater camera that's on 24 hours a day to try and encourage people to connect with the environment around them and under the sea and feel a sense of pride in it. Um, I still think that's kind of just through a screen again and I wanted people to see things firsthand. But that was, that was the big scale, that was me taking my imagination seriously. And the other small thing, now I've decided to intermit for a year and I'm thinking, what can I do at home? I was thinking, and, I, and I'm sure you've all probably done them already. I put them behind me, the um, cyanotypes. Has everybody done them, <laughs> I suspect? <laughs> And, and I have got a couple of questions I'd love to ask everybody about them, some technical questions, because I'm sure lots of you have done them. But I can do that at home with the few plants that we've got in the local park. And then when um, lockdown lifted slightly, you can go out in your car. I zoomed off to the beach that's about 40 minutes away, because I really, it was seaweed I really wanted to do and things to do with the sea. 
So that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm poodling along, just playing really, because I want to try other alternative photographic me photography methods. But can I ask a question now about the cyanotype? Yeah, please do. Yeah. yeah. Um, does anybody want to wave? I mean, do, do, do um, have lots of you done them already? Yeah. I've been doing them for years, teaching oh. them. And, oh, yeah. wow, you're the perfect person for me to ask. No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll show you first. It's, as I said, seaweed I've particularly been doing, doing now. But um, early on, what I, I'm not very interested in just um, silhouettes. They don't really interest me very much. And what I want instead, if you can see, is to get the tones in. And it's these tones, um, so you can sort of see the difference, it's the tones, and it's the tones that's been driving me nuts, because I thought I had it. I thought, oh, I only have to leave it out for hours and hours, and that's okay. And no, it's not okay. <laughs> it spoils me. The same here, you can see with honesty. Um, there's one, no tone, and there's the tones. And it's the to what I call the sort of translucent tones, the definition that I want, that I'm really struggling with. And I especially want to get that for the seaweed more. And I have in some cases, I've got some nice abstract tones and things. And I just, have you got any, anybody got any suggestions on how best to get the tones? Are you, are you keeping a record of your timings and time of day and all that sort of thing? Because yes, I'm interested yeah. that sort of like in the, the, the honesty that you're just showing, You've mm. got tones in one, but not in the other. Mm. And, you know, you, you, do you know sort of what the difference was in terms of, you know, the time that you mm. exposed it? Yeah. Weird, this one that had nothing, was, it was still three hours. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really? very long exposure, I have to say. That's incredibly yeah. long. It's about the contact, really, with the, with the actual paper, I think. Mm. It's about the actual connection with it. Um, but it is very experimental, so you're never going to get the same thing, you know, once again. They're all unique prints, but Margaret's actually a, a real expert on cyanotype. Passing over, she makes the most beautiful cyanotypes, the most exquisite cyanotypes. Wait, who's Margaret? <laughs> sorry, Margaret, I'm not putting you. Oh, Margaret, Harland. Hello, <laughs> sorry. <it's laughs> um, I've not done any for a while. Hmm. Um, one thing I did do that did help with getting tones is have you, um, what I do sometimes is what I call pre-flash the paper. So expose it to the sunlight for a short while. You have to experiment and that will give you a base tone anyway and get rid of the whiteness. Mm -hmm. um, but also I think it's going to depend upon the thickness of your item that you're using, mm. um, whether the sun can get through it or not. And also the time of day, um, around midday, the UV light is at its strongest. Um, so if there isn't much sunlight, a very long exposure still may not be enough. Mm. Yeah, um, I mean, the UV is at its peak in midsummer as well. So you tend to get yeah. a much kind of stronger definition at this time of the year. Mm. But it does vary. I mean, because we're having quite sort of overcast days at the moment, mm. the UV is not really... I think it's maybe peaking at five or maybe five, whereas when it's really, really sunny, it maybe goes up to seven. But in Norwich, it might even be higher um, because you're, mm -hmm. you're in a different yeah. climate zone. But have you, are you, are you self-coating your paper as well? Yes, so, I'm, giving it, sorry, yeah. I'm giving it two layers now to try and help. And I also give it a first an acid. Uh, I add um, cider vinegar to it in the first rinse, which has helped a bit. And That's I take the bleaching, yeah. And um, I take part. Yes, I had read that if you, I was that was one of the things I was going to try putting it out in the sun, taking it in again for maybe is it ten minutes? Do you think? I, it it really did. I couldn't give you a time because no. it as you know as you know Margaret would agree. It just mm -hmm. really depends on the the kind of paper that you're using and the conditions, yeah. and it's just yeah, massive variable. But and there's lots of toning you can do with it as well if you want to. You can yeah, sort of tone, and that can add sort of definition as well to your actual um, silhouette. Or the oh, that's what toning can. Oh. Yeah, but again, it's all a matter of um, exploring and experimenting. Mm. Um, there's no right or wrong, really. It's just um, it's just playing and enjoying the process. Oh, yeah. I think. <laughs> Personally speaking. Lizzie, did you have your hand up? 
So I was just going to ask you, Peony, if you tried cyanotype with um, seaweed. Yes, um, there's some behind this, various ones behind. I love the abstract of the very thin ones and, mm. and some of them, the dye cut the um, juice so that uh, can turn it an interesting colour as well. But yes, I've, been, I've collected quite a lot of seaweed and done things, they're behind mm. me. I'd like to talk to you about kelp. Uh, all right later if i may <laughs> happy to thank you um, if you put your if you want to put your emails into this chat um then you could always pick up again afterwards if you don't mind sharing that caroline who's who's appearing on screen as iphone mm -hmm. um, caroline hyde brownies our uh, artist of the month this year i just typed into chat that when you work in nature oh. it's intuitive and serendipitous uh, to think from we all agree with do you want to say anything more about that, Caroline? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, good. Sorry, I'm on my iPhone. It um, needs must, I'm afraid. There's right. three of us. There's three of us working from home today, so we're all um, yeah, iPaded and laptoped out. Um, I was just thinking, you know, when you were talking about the processes with regards to Peony, Peony and I know each other anyway, so um, she knows that I have quite a haphazard approach to um, my practice. But um, yeah, intuitive really, because when I work with natural um, plant fibres and things, I don't tend to set out with a finished um, outcome in my mind. I tend to just do what um, the other lady, sorry, I forget her name, said about play and experimental, um, sort of just creative playing really, and arbitrary experimentation. Um, so that's what I meant by intuitive. And um, serendipitous really, just by unusual and accidental uh, discoveries really just by playing with natural um plant fiber residue waste whatever you want to play with um it usually throws up things that you don't necessarily expect um so that's really what i meant by serendipitous okay if that helps yeah, yeah. <laughs> if anybody else wants to talk about um it's, I think it's been quite interesting that people have talked about, uh, in some ways, losing connection with the way that they've been practicing, but actually finding more depth in you know, making more local connections. Martin. Oh, sorry. Just, uh, just I remembered uh, apropos of what I was saying earlier on. The only uh, one of the negative things is because I, I was making ceramics at uh, Dartington. And uh, unfortunately, one of the consequences of uh, the lockdown has been that the ceramic studio has closed and uh, that is now no, no longer going to be available to uh, people around here, mm. which is a shame. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Do you know why? Oh, I think it just became not viable anymore. Right. Yeah, sure. And you know, if you think about um, social distancing in relation yeah. to a studio and so on, it's just uh, impossible, really. I mean, I think so much of what we do, it feels to me a bit impossible now. I mean, my, you know, my job is kind of um, um, bringing people together <laughs> and uh, bringing people together face to face is, a very different thing from what we're doing now uh, and I don't know how I'm going to how we're going to do it I mean our you know our main event for this year which normally would happen this time of year but actually was planned for November it, it, we've already postponed to next year because we just don't know how yeah. we would do it um, with whom we're going to do it where we're going to do it um, you know there are just very, an awful lot of unknowns Yes, I think the uh, next, um, mind you, I've been saying this all the way along, really, the next week or two, the next few weeks are going to be crucial, I think, as to how the next few months okay, go, so. really. Yeah. Don't want to be depressing, of course, but... Well, no, I mean, we just don't know, do we? We don't, we don't know anything. Really. No, so. no. 
Does anybody else use how to, yeah, Christiana. Are we, you're muted, darling, I can't hear you. you uh, I know that, that the Zoom meetings are not the real thing, but to be honest, it's better than nothing. And um, still having our first Friday, even on Zoom, even with a smaller group, it's, it's, it's just still keeping the connection going, keeping the conversation going. And <clears throat> I just hope that, for example, I, I wouldn't travel on the train at the moment. Mm. And mm. I don't know what will be happening. And as Martin said, I, yes. Do we get a second peak? When we do we get it? And mm. I think in the sense of general safety, uh, I would just would be staying put in Penzance and not traveling to Darting. And so I just really hope that that you might carry on from September mm. with the monthly Zoom meeting. Yeah, I mean, quite a few people have said that, people, people who are not local. Um, Ellie, do you want to come uh, in? Yes, um, because of the, there's no way I could have come to any of your first Fridays. I just get little snippets. On, from what you put on your Facebook page or um, and for me this is the third one and uh, I, I've been taking notes I've been linking with people associated with um, art.earth on Instagram I've looked into what their work has been I've so enjoyed listening to people talking about their work from the last two meetings so I would never have met all these fantastic artists if it had not been for this situation. Um, added to that, which I didn't say before, um, where my main income was teaching just adults or, or children because of lockdown and being here, I'm sure you've all heard of the uh, uh, artist support play, uh, pledge, but I put some work there and started selling um, and that opened up for me feeling that actually as an artist, I would prefer to do that. Um, so that was another big plus. So for me, the, the meetings especially have been fantastic. I've really enjoyed them so much. Good, and thank you. Yeah. Loved meeting the people and going into their websites, their Instagram, and having a look, just this discovered fantastic work. Lizzie, Lizzie, you've had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say this is my second session and uh, Christiana told me about you. And uh, it's such a joy to find you, especially at this point. Um, for me, uh, the journey uh, in the last few months has been that at the same time as the lockdown, um, my husband was diagnosed with um, uh, terminal bone cancer so um, he's extremely vulnerable because his um, immune system is very very low so it means I'm kind of locked down or he's locked down really for the rest of his life which could be he was given months but he's doing pretty well so probably got a bit longer than that so actually having met a group of artists um, uh, who um, seem to be uh, have a lot in common with my way of thinking these days it has been an absolute joy and I'm so grateful for it. Um, and the other thing is that um, I suppose since uh, lockdown I've been much more grounded. It sounds a bit like other people um, and that for me has uh, transformed the work I do from working predominantly in porcelain with lustres and oxides and so on it's it's given me time to really slow down and um, because the theme was citrus i've been working with um orange peel and grapefruit peel and different citrus peels um and uh, then translating that into porcelain using the peel as a mold huh. but um actually just sitting with um at, uh, the whole subject I've been working more directly with the with the peel itself rather than using it as a mold so in fact I'm fiddling away with lemon peel here so I'm trying to get a whole anyway 
and that's another matter. But um, so uh, it's trans the lockdown is actually that's the really positive thing. One of the p really positive things that have come out of it um, that um, I'm able to focus more on a respect for the material and uh, that's a real joy to me. Mm. I'd love to, to, to know what you're doing down there with your lemon peels that you have. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> there we are. Here's a little box full of, of um, peels. I don't know, I can't really show you, can I? <laughs> that is, we can sort of see the peel there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they they're just they're once they're dried. Are they dried? Are they dried? Oh, they're dried. dried. Oh, they're, yeah. they're like little limpets when yeah. they're really cleaned out, like little vessels. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I'm just intrigued by. Lemon by yeah. yeah. Mm. Useful. So I'm hoping that I can um, make a group of them and hand, and stand them in some sort of grid. Um, to uh, showcase the lemon, the the joy of the lemon peel. Uh, and we've got open studios almost certainly at the end of August, so I'm hoping to have the work ready to show then. So is that going, is that going to be um, a way? Uh, studio, open studios is going is going to run. It's is it, that a good uh, way of showing work apart. Yeah, you know, now, now that the, the, there are not many galleries are open. Absolutely, yeah. So do you get a good... a good? Um... Well, I've never shown from home, I must say, before. Um, but I have a new studio space, which um, I'm trying to, to incorporate the... Well, it's more of a garden come studio uh, exhibition, it, it will be. Um, so it'll be out mainly outside, I hope. So I'm hoping it'll be safe and yeah, I'm at pretty central Truro, so it's quite easy to get to. Mm. We'll see what happens. Either way, it's something to work towards and um, it provides a good focus. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when, you know, I, I'm also a carer and have to have to stay at home mostly. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anybody else kind of had a, um, yeah, Julia? Um, I've actually really enjoyed the slow time um, because it's actually given me time to concentrate and focus on something that I probably technically wouldn't have pushed as far as I could if I hadn't actually been in lockdown. So, you know, that I could go, it's a sort of printing process, but it's a textile process. Uh, it's using dye and not using ink. And um, so it's made me really focus on it and actually keep records of what I'm doing and what the variations are and everything as well, which is very, it's quite on me really because normally I'd be quite scatty about it <laughs> um, but it's sort of it's had a definite you know there's been a definite bonus in that and I'm really sort of pleased with what I'm producing um, and also we've just been so restricted because you know I've been in the house or the studio and I've just felt so fortunate to live on the edge of a village where you can get out and do really nice walks and uh, but even so I've managed to find lanes in the area that I've never walked down before so it feels like a real connection with your actual space where your home is and and your roots really that is an experience I probably wouldn't have taken in the same way if we hadn't actually been in lockdown so there's been a lot of positives. Um, and I think, you know, Zoom meetings in, in many ways have actually really sort of kept me going. I've got various ones that I go into during the week. And I think this connect, you know, the Art Earth connection as well has been um, interesting because I've got friends in Scotland who've been, you know, dipping into the Art Earth website now. And, um, 
it's becoming it feels that it's becoming because i've been talking about it sort of much more connected with a lot of other people i know I said oh that sounds interesting yeah i look into that you know and uh, i i was really busy at the last meeting so i only joined in um by listening to it but there was um a tech well she wasn't really a textile artist but the artist who was doing apes whose name is mm. um you know they were just absolutely wonderful and so mm -hmm. just getting into at a time when we can't go to exhibitions and get extra stimulus from people as well to have those just little 10 minute talks from people who are you know discussing their work has been really i found really useful um i i've had I've also been on a personal level, sort of really sustained by poetry during this time. Yeah. And um, as part of sort of, as part of the debris from my practice, I you know, it produces a lot of newsprint with part prints on it. And I've not wanted to throw those away. So I've actually made those into books with poems. Um, and some friends have been sending me poems that they've written as well and i'm sort of incorporating those into books at the moment so i think maybe that's sort of something that um if anybody you know is keen on a collaboration where they want a poem actually put into a book and bound um yeah it would be yeah it would be great if you want to get in touch Okay. Hi. Hi there. Willie Gowans here. Hello, Willie. Hi. Um, just through your last speaker there, um, I'm a poet myself, like, you know, and uh, I've been, uh, like, with the Zoom and all that, I've been doing a lot of open mics on, on Zoom. I've actually been uh, performed in America as well, like, which <laughs> it's quite amazing when you think about it. Although you've got somebody from Cyprus here, like, I was very interested in what their last speaker was saying about uh, getting poems uh, in a book form is something I'd really like to do, like, you know, it'd be really is interesting. It, it? Uh, but what I've done um, recently is I've got some uh, videos made out of my poems. So mm -hmm. I've got three, uh, three poems uh, produced in a, tr in a trilogy. And they've been actually accepted and have been published in film form within oh. the last, uh, within this lockdown period. Like, that's, that's uh, really one is, uh, yeah, one has been uh, featured in a, a project, the film for B by, uh, in spare part films. It's uh, a collaboration project with lots of different artists. Um, and it's like a sort of commemoration for an, an American person that died, the family decided to make this film to uh, to bloom and appreciate her life like you know and the other one has been actualized uh, um, a, an actualized session uh, which again is a collaborative project with lots of different artistic pieces you can actually look them up they were premiered uh, just through the week here so one's a film for B and the other one is actualized uh, you'd be able to look them up like you know but as for publishing uh, and, and getting uh, poems with illustrations into print is something I'm really interested in, like, you know. And that's what I've been up to this uh, this I don't think any of this would ever have happened uh, if it hadn't been for this lockdown because there's so many artists now, like, trying to find um, different ways to express themselves now that they can't get into the, the physical theatre. You know, they're experimenting with online projects and Zoom Zoom chats and things like that, you know. So it's been a very interesting time. Like, Zoom's a great way of keeping in touch as well, like, you know. But uh, thank you. If the, uh, if the last speaker would like to maybe get in touch, I can leave a link to my email address. Yeah, why don't you maybe... put that into the, into the chat, Willie? Yeah, we could maybe do a collaboration on something. That would be really yeah, interesting, because... like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be very interesting. Uh, I'd, uh, are you binding your own books, or are you publishing through the uh, Kindle and things like that? 
No, these are, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. <clears throat> these are literally one-offs. And yeah. uh, I started doing them because I actually, I hate waste. And um, a lot of the debris from this printing process I'm doing is really actually rather sensitive and rather beautiful. Um, so I've been, you know, these are sort of done with Japanese bindings. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're probably going to be extremely hard to see on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Can well, we can see. We can see a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That looks excellent. So it does. Yeah. yeah. Very, very good. Yeah. You very know, good. And there's quite a lot of. They're all sort of. This one's a John O'Donoghue poem. Um. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, the the printing process is actually using a lot of plants which are local, and I'm also trying to make my own printing ink now because I'm just doing um, well collecting you know plants to actually make ink with. But that's a sort of a development because I want actually want my practice to be much more sustainable. Yeah, you use a, a silk screen processor, yeah? No, it's not. It's um, it's a textile process, and it uses a heat press. Oh and yeah. It, it uses dye rather than printing ink, so it's um, you know, it's taken me ages to perfect, and I actually I don't know anybody else who does it. Ah. So. Yeah, very interesting. I'll leave my uh, email address in the uh, in the chat then, and uh, we can yeah. maybe get in contact. Okay. Yeah. Great, and I'll be in contact. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah. There's also a friend of mine who actually runs an organisation called Public Poetry in uh, Texas, in the uh, state. And yeah. they're actually meeting once a month now online. Um, but... You know, she. I was talking to her last week, and and they're looking for you know people who've actually written stuff specifically on COVID. So you might be interested in that as well. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple of poems on the COVID as well, like you know. So oh. yeah, if you could leave that link as well, like I'll maybe get in contact with that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I've just typed thank in you. public poetry in Texas. Hopefully, that's findable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I'd be interested to know from you all. Uh, not in, uh, this, and you can email me later. But if you have other thoughts, but you know what? Whether there are sort of small mini things we can do in in between the monthly meetings online, whether it's a kind of you know Q and A on cyanotype, or whether it's you know some kind of specialist thing, or a particular conversation that somebody wants to initiate or um, indeed whether it's just sharing poetry readings you know, I'm just uh, I'm curious to, to know what else we might be able to offer that would be of interest and Martin has his hand up. Uh, I was just wondering um, whether a, a whatsapp group might work in that context. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a, really a WhatsApp user myself, but that doesn't mean that others aren't. So that's something we could definitely explore. Yeah, Peony. You're muted, so I can't hear you, Sorry, I'm doing that. Um, it, it's more general things. I only wondered, there's probably a reason why, but um. Before you do each thing, like the meetings, to send everybody an email, because a lot of people don't go on Facebook nowadays. I didn't yeah. receive any of your Facebook things because I hadn't put you as always see, which I do now, the other yesterday. But I just wonder if it's worth sending an email to everybody once a month with the, to remind them about the first, because a couple of friends I told it about, they said, oh, we've got something arranged we would have done otherwise. But actually, what, what I can, because I don't, don't really have an email list for First Friday, but what I can do, 
and what I should do actually, because I uh, is send out a newsletter to everybody on the mailing list. Um, and so if you're not on the mailing list, you should sign yourself on there. Uh, oh. And then that way, if you're not checking Facebook or you're not looking at other social media, at least you know about First Friday. So you're reminding me that I need to do that because I, uh, I, I don't like to fill people's email boxes, but I do need to send something out once a month. So I should remind myself to do that. Do I need to sign up for a newsletter separately then? I have never had one. Yes, if you've never had one, you've probably not signed up. So if you go to the front page of our website and just mm. go down to the bottom of the page, you can sign up there. All right, okay. Richard, sorry. Yeah, that's okay, yes sir. Um, you keep talking about people adding their emails to the conversation. Yeah. How the hell do you do that? Uh, okay, so if you if you click on the chat button, and that will pop up the chat window, uh, and then you can just write in there, and I'll go capture this chat, uh, and it will be shared online. I'm not sure I can find it, the chat window button. Uh, it's right, it should be uh, it should be on the bottom of your screen. You see where all the little icons are? Mine are at the top, yeah. yeah it's under, okay. under more. If you look under more. Oh, okay. Yeah, it might be it might not be visible. Yeah, I've got and it gives me chat meeting settings minimize. Yeah. So if you click on chat, it should open up the chat window. Oh right. Yeah? Oh yeah. You can see there's been quite a little stream going on of chat as well as our conversation. So, I see. And there are various emails in there from various people. So I can tap in my email at the bottom? You can. Right. Thank you very much. That's okay. Tutorials. Hey, Tony has joined us. Hello, Hi. Tony. Hi, Tony. Hello. Tony's on a different time zone. He's <laughs> just come in at two o'clock. Yeah. How, how are you? Good. Yeah? Yeah. I, um, I was a bit foxed by your... Um, instructions on the web page saying the details for june are oh sorry so about i reckon that. I'm, uh, I'm uh i'm my 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 brain is terribly non-functional on the whole there so, so copy and paste i think yeah yeah exactly precisely that yes anyway you're here now so i'm here okay We've i've just um i've just uh got uh, some mackerel from budley beach and uh i just put them in brine for the afternoon so that I can smoke them this evening for Ooh, dinner. Great. <laughs> send, us, send us all some. Mackerel uh, hot smoked with gooseberry sauce. Oh, lovely. I saw that on your Facebook actually. You've got <laughs> lots of gooseberries. <laughs> yeah. uh, we've, we've been talking about all kinds of things. We've been talking about uh, whether the last, uh, you know, the, the pandemic has, has made any difference to your work at all, both either what you do or how you communicate it. So your work, someone working with words, maybe it hasn't. Um, well, uh, I, haven't, um, I haven't written anything new for some time. I have been doing domestic things. I've been doing gardening. Uh, I've been going out for little walks by the sea, and uh, that's how it is at the moment. So I, d I don't know. I don't know if it's really changed anything because um, for me um, in my work, but uh, it'll happen again soon. Mm. Um, and when it's uh, whether it's got anything to do with uh, with this outbreak or whether it'll be something else, I don't know. I'm um, I'm ruminating. I think is the best way to describe it. Mm. Um, I've been doing lots of research. Uh, on different um, different things, and uh, they haven't come to the surface um, yet. And I'm responding to uh, you know things that people ask me to do. Okay, I, you know, I'm I'm ready to do that at any time. Okay, <laughs> anything at all? <laughs> make me some make me some lovely smoked mackerel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Lizzie. You're muted. Can't hear you. You're still muted. Here, I'll unmute you. 
you yeah. feel such a pull. Now we one, can hear you. Okay. Good. Um, one thing that uh, I've enjoyed during this time is actually having chats on either Zoom or FaceTime occasionally or Skype and um, maybe doing something like I'm scratching away at my lemon peels here. Um, and, uh, or, no, that's not the point. Um, uh, and drawing the person I'm talking to. So uh, I just wondered if I could put it out there, if anybody is into drawing and would like to, um, to do something like that, maybe in a uh, half an hour or an hour's conversation and draw each other. Um, I'd, really, um, I'd really like to do that. I've generally done it with people I know well. I, I've done it with Christiana and uh, it, it's just lovely to draw again, you know, whatever we're doing with our other sort of work, uh, however, uh, far from drawing it might be. Uh, it's lovely to return to that, I think. Okay, that sounds good. So I'll put my uh, email address in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> I've done it once, but I'll do it again. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Yeah, Martin. Yeah, sorry, I, <laughs> I'm really... Um, you get another to... tutorial? What? You get another tutorial? <laughs> Go on. I'm really anxious about raising this. Though. I've just been sort of thinking about um, uh, whether this is an appropriate a group to connect in this way with, but um, everybody seems to be um, sort of absorbed with, um, you know, technologies or techniques or objects, um, things you can get hold of. And to sort of scale, uh, whether it's plants or um, things of that nature. And I just wondered, is anybody uh, who, who engages, because I, I try to engage, but struggle with it really, finding uh, a means of expressing it with uh, the landscape at a larger scale. Um, and I'd be intrigued to connect with anybody else that's sort of doing that. And I also, as opposed to the natural world and the eco world, if you like, <laughs> connect with the underworld uh, or the dark side, if I may say that, um, in that um, I am very interested in um, the surface structure of the earth, if you like, mm. um, and the manifestation that's called structural geology and the materials and minerals and events that have happened there um uh but they're they're very difficult to get to grips with and yeah. grasp in an artistic context tell, 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 talk a bit more about what you mean by uh, uh landscape on a larger scale i'm curious well about... for instance uh, i was listening to the lady talking about seaweed now seaweed is quite a relatively accessible um uh, object that you can get hold of and do things with if you like uh, if I go to one of the interesting places I've, I, I visit fairly frequently at the moment is on the coast of, of the coast of uh, South Devon um, where it, it's, in the, it's, it's a, a coastal location that, which like all coastal locations are subject to erosive processes um, but it's all at a much more significant scale than a human scale. Yeah, yeah. It's also on a significant time scale, which is completely different to the human time scale. Yeah. But nevertheless, it is awe inspiringly, um, uh, and, and, and well, for me, being outside anyway in the environment is, is, is very inspiring. But at this, in these sorts of locations, they are, you need know, I say, awe-inspiring, really. Um, but finding a medium or a process or a, a, a way of uh, engaging with it uh, in the creative context, um, I do find quite difficult. I mean, one thinks of people like Richard Long and, and so on, and, and the, uh, the, you know, Earth Artists of America and so on. But... Um, uh, it's it's. <laughs> I don't know whether I struggle between you know 
trying to retell the narrative that the geologist would tell you, um, which they certainly can do, about how these 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 objects came into and and features came into being, and then that nar that narrative is usually an extraordinary history, really. Mm. Um, but short of illustrating that or trying to illustrate that, um, I mean, I'm just interested in the way people engage with these other sort of more human scale objects uh, uh, compared to what I Mini find Mini interesting. New, did you want to come in? Yeah, we can't hear you. I wanted to talk a little bit also about my experience of lockdown, but maybe first to respond to Martin. Now I'm not sure if I've understood correctly. Um, I've been, my my boyfriend has a real interest in um, deep time human heritage, how the civilization, archaeology, and new findings, um, finding signs in natural landscapes of past events, such as big floods, for example, or, you know, and we have gone out, we've visited lots of stone circles, for example, during lockdown. Well, not lots, but a few, um, just because they're beautiful sites and being really curious in, in the wonder and the mystery that surrounds these old monuments. And also, Mm, occasionally we are in a place and we are thinking we have discovered a stone circle that has overgrown mm. um, where there are only a few stones still standing so um, so we, we are kind of aware of these layers uh, as we walk and explore the landscape and we listen to Graham Hancock occasionally, um, who is really far out there. We see. Oh, lost hey, we've, we've lost your microphone for a minute. We can't. Yeah, we can't hear you. No, we can't hear you. I think it's pulled out. It sounded like it pulled out. Now. Now I can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Stefan Harding from Schumacher College developed an app called the Deep Time Walk. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where he leads you, and I've never done it. Where he leads you um, through each layer of the of the earth into deep time, and I always wanted to do it. Um, well, it's still out there, isn't it? It's still accessible. Still out there, yeah. So, yes, it's, it's, uh, called deep, it's, it's called deep time. The app, I can't quite remember. Deep time walk. Deep time, yeah, yes, I'm just typing. I'm just typing that into um, the chat there. Yeah, Martin. Yes, I know the one you mean, the deep time, deep time um, uh, app. Yes, um, and you've been talking about um, I don't know Neolithic or Paleolithic um, um, uh, remains and things that you could find and touch and see. I suppose what I'm talking about, uh, and, and the thing about the the deep time walk, and I saw the video of the deep time walk. Um, uh, it leaves me, uh, it didn't very ex excite me very much, I suppose, because it's just, it was a certain, it was a sort of narration, if you like, and that's fair enough. But um, if I go to, for instance, my location that I was talking about, I'm actually engaging in touching with materials that are something like um, uh, uh, 290 million years old. But nevertheless, they are there, and um, to some extent, I can experience what has happened to them since that time. Um, but this is not really um, within a lot of people's consciousness. Um, everybody experiences the landscape quite understandably, you know, through their through the pathways and through the uh fields and their communities and so on and the, how the communities have used the materials of the land but um yeah so uh you know my my first got interested in this i don't i don't want to <laughs> occupy too much time here but um 
No, I think I think it's a really I think it's a really interesting question, and I think you know, like so many so many things to do with the natural world, it's it, at some level it's ineffable because we 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 struggle with scale, whether that's the scale of time or whether it's the scale of distance. Or I mean, uh, there was a story on the news yesterday about a star that's disappeared without an explosion. And I was finding that quite interesting. And then real, reading on, learned that it was 290 million light years away. And it might simply have been obscured by, you know, some grain of something like that. But the scale of that is just so vast in so many ways that we can't, even, I can't wrap my head around it. And I think, you know, if you, begin, if you begin to look at the world around us, the landscape in that way, it does become very inexpressible. I think it becomes very, it does become very hard to, to explore things in that way. I think, you know, artists are very good at the, at the micro and not terribly good at the macro. I mean, it was brought home to me when I first engaged with this, and this is the last point I'll make, because it was one of the first experiences that happened to me, was um, looking at, again, the local landscape around here, you have a lot of um, Permian deposits. Um, and they're very, in lots of ways, they're very scenic. And one of them was at the uh, on the against the railway line that runs between Tynmouth and, Ex and Exeter. Everybody loves it. You know, you can see the sea and the red sandstones. Well, <laughs> and they're a feature of the British landscape. But mm. they were formed um, in the desert. <laughs> And in order to be in a desert, you have to be in a very hot part of the world. So they were actually formed in a, when the uh, uh, continent was close to the equator. And so here on your local doorstep, you have the remains of a desert. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Thank you for listening. <laughs> uh, that's great. That's very interesting. Yeah, um, uh, Peony. I've got my mic on this time. You do. <laughs> I just thought I'd mention that I agree. It's it, it's getting the sense of time. I mean, we can't really comprehend it ourselves. And I was um, when I was thinking more of doing illustration, I um, did a project um, based around um, you know the hold stones, um, flints, hold flints. Mm. We have all different sizes of them, and I was doing lots of things with them. And then I suddenly thought, well because there's lots and lots of um, um, fables, whatever you want to call them, on looking through them and seeing alternative worlds and and you're meant to put um, morning dew on your eye in Italy to see the alternative world. Um, but I came up with this idea of what I called a stone watcher because um, in Haysborough in Norfolk, they, found, they discovered the remains of human foot or homomin footprints that were 800,000 years old, which is just mind boggling to the, I mean, we're here all that time. And, and I was trying, and I wanted to do something that gave a sense of, um, you know, the 800,000 years, and you know, that the, there is a footprint on the world. I mean, Dartmoor was once forest, it's humans that have made it, it is, but at the same time, um, everything that's happened in the past 20 years, all the plastics, everything, such as the huge impact we've had detrimentally in the short time. And it, I, so I looked at a lot of geological times and tried to think about it. And the way I came up with it, it this was more illustri illustration rather than, was an artist book. I don't know if you can see, um, it's got two sides to it and it's Constantina and it was the stone watcher, but I added words to it because the only way I could think of doing it was to add a few words because I'm also a writer and I do write poetry so well, to have a line of words to help explain it all and to show the world changing along the way and I just think it's really ha hard to do and I sometimes wonder whether the only way to do it is through say something constant or something that's a series or else always it's the words as well the title of the piece I wonder is the thing that uh, it's the title of the piece gives the link to the time that's all I want to say yeah, Minu, actually, uh, Martin, I'll come back to you, but Minu, I have a hand up. Thank you. Yeah, um, two things that just came to my mind. Uh, yesterday, we watched a quite current video by NASA um, that where you can watch the sun 
uh, One Decade of Sun mm. um, and was published in June this year, uh, so just last month. Um, each second represents one day of the sun and where one telescope just took lots of pictures every day of the sun for 10 years and uh, a German artist did lots of some sound to it and it's really also quite extraordinary and quite mind-blowing to watch our sun um, <laughs> and one other thing is our next artist of the month is called Lotte Scott who uh, works with archaeology and um, materials that she excavates and trying to bring alive her story in a contemporary context is really interesting. Mm. Great, well we'll look forward to um, look forward to seeing that. We're starting to see um, uh, people drifting away and I'm just wondering if we should um, begin to round this up. So I just wondered if anybody wanted to say anything um, about what we've heard today or what they've been thinking but not said or uh, anything like that. Yeah, Manu. Uh, just, um, oh, sorry, Manu. Ellie, go on. Sorry, yes, just wondering as, a, as a, a, an extra communication, um, because we're all quite visual, whether in, in some way some of the people that take part in, in the first Friday, if there was any way that we could send one image each mm. of what we do, if that's appropriate. Um, I found it very useful finding people on Instagram and just seeing what they do. Mm. So I was just wondering if that was something that could be done. One image from each person that we could all see that would give a, an idea of, of what the practice was, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just making a note of that on the chat that if people want to send one image, whether it's uh, uh, that it in some way represents what they do, yeah. you can certainly share on, that. On your, on your website, uh, you know, I, I go in every so often, and, and that one picture that represents everybody, I, I, I really like to see those. <laughs> so okay. it, it invites invites you in to, to the artist world. Yes, it does, absolutely. Christiana. Yeah, also several people were talking about um, writing poetry and maybe you can extend that from an image to the written word. Yeah, I mean, I'm using image in the, in the most metaphorical sense, so it might be, yeah. <laughs> you know, a series of, I think the, for me, the, it's about it's about how how you encapsulate what you're doing. Yeah, I have to say today was really inspiring. It is seeing how people in, reacted and worked with their situation in different ways and found different ways. To, and yeah, I'm just really really looking forward to September. Mm. Good, Manu, did you you had your hand up as well? Didn't you? I uh, just I just wanted to just say a few lines because I haven't spoken about um, at the beginning, and just to say um, I, I I work with dance and um, more or less, and one thing during lockdown that I worked on is I worked with a research group on the a the absence of touch mm. during lockdown or the absence of physical mm. touch, mm. and how that affects um, human beings. Um, but we very much looked at um, what are the, our sense organs that allow us to be in touch with the world in general. And even though we are asked by our governments to, to be out of touch, physical touch with each other, um, we explored and um, actually opened up so many more other channels of connecting with other physical things that are around us, other uh, physical beings, really. So um, it's really opened up just a big conversation around um, how how are we in relationship with other the, the animate world around us, and there was actually so much more tactility uh, in my daily life, more conscious tactility than before, if that makes any sense. That's very interesting. Yeah. And right. Hi there, uh, Willie Gowans here. Um, I just got to say that um, the sense of touch 
if you look at that, uh, the film, film for B, my piece explores that uh, in video and poetry. Uh, it's called Here's Looking at You, and uh, it explores uh, touch and the absence of touch and how physical it can be. Just a stare can be as physical as actually touching. So I would, I would suggest everybody looks at the film for B. It's a very interesting project, like, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Just one technical question. Uh, can we save the chat? Is that possible? Yeah, um, uh, I think you, I think, uh, I think, I, mean, I don't know if anybody, I can save the chat. I don't know if anybody else can. Yeah. I can save it and I will publish it on the website along with the video of this conversation. All right, that'd be great. Yeah, thank you very and much. Yeah. Tony, you have a... Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, um, to say that I'm very interested in what Minna was saying and I'd like to see something that would uh, show me, you know, what that means, because um, the idea of uh, of your dance practice and your research, um, you know, dealing with how we can't uh, can't be connected by touch now. So, uh, what what is there in? I mean, do you have a video of the dance, or do do you have um, uh, you know anything to so, show? So the. We were in the first stage of this research, which was mainly conducted on our own. And yeah. we produced lots of different materials, including lots of writing, video, audio recordings. Um, so there is no dance per se, but I think what the research was aiming towards is to develop scores or exercises that um, er each and everyone can do, if you're a dancer or not. You, as a human being, you can do them. And it's basically more about being aware to be in touch and get in contact with our surrounding. Does that make any sense? Mm. It so does, yeah. So in essence, it, it, it's for us to become more aware of our sensual capaci capacities. Mm. Uh, so as you sit, you can become more aware of the feet of your feet touching the ground, you can yeah. become aware of how your jumper sits sits on yeah. your shoulders, or how your glasses are touching the back of your ears. And if you notice, you you feel the air touching your lungs, and you you become aware of the light touching your eyes and the sound touching your ears, and 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 so on. I mean, you can explore that, and that just means that we are en enlivening. Um, some of these more habitual ways of how we are in contact with the outer world and that creates more re relationability um, and where we have become aware that we are actually touched much more we are touched and we touch touch is a is a two-way thing whenever we touch we are touched back um, in some ways we become more aware of that and I think that can give a certain grounding, possibly. I don't know. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. That's it. Anyone okay. else like to give a parting shot? Okay. All right. Well, thank you ever so much for joining us again. Um, I will, I've saved the chat, I will save the video, and just like last time, we'll post it on the page for the, the July 1st Friday, as opposed to the June 1st Friday. Um, and we tend not to gather in August, usually. Um, this year, of course, is different. So, but I think we will. I hope, it, I hope it's different. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> shall we, so shall we do one that in August then? Yeah. Well, yes, I, right. I, I so we won't take we won't take a summer break this year. We'll be back on the first Friday in August, and um, so the invitation goes out to everyone. Anyone who wants to um, uh, make a make a, an offer, share some work, share an idea, uh, whatever that might be. And um, yeah, I think that's it. I think we will say farewell. Yeah. Really enjoyed being here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 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 Th
Bye. 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 Bye.